with Elizabeth, featuring Del Moore. Incident number one in the life of Elizabeth occurred just before she and Alvin went to San Francisco. It seems that uh, Elizabeth had been to a fortune teller on this particular day and came home with a lot of very strange ideas. That's Elizabeth. I hate to interrupt her game of solitaire, but we've got to get started. Elizabeth, how are you tonight? Uh, Elizabeth, the red three on the black four. <laughs> Anything exciting on the fire for tonight? Well, uh, I have some news for you. Mm-hmm. Alvin's leaving on a business trip tomorrow morning. That's all I know about it, but Alvin's boss is about to call. Why don't you figure out some way for you to go along, too? <laughs> Hello? Hello, Mr. Fuddy. <coughs> no, Alvin isn't home yet. He... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get a pencil. Yeah. Alvin's plane ticket will be at the Miracle Airlines. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I'll tell him. <clears throat> By the way, Mr. Fuddy, would you mind if I went along on this trip with Alvin? Oh, don't worry about him. I'll handle him all right. But I'll need some facts from you first. Where's he going? San Francisco. Uh-huh. Palace Hotel? Yeah. Room... 705. That ought to do it. San Francisco Palace Hotel, room 705. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Fuddy, Alvin knows these details, doesn't he? All right, well. Thank you. Bye. San Francisco Palace Hotel, room... Elizabeth! Um, uh, I'm in here, darling. Hi, honey. Hello, darling. Mm. Elizabeth, I'm, I'm afraid I have what is some rather bad news. Oh, you sit right down here, darling. You tell me your news later. Well, right well, now, the important I... news to me is that you're home. Well, let, let me get this off my chest, honey. Okay, I... Just lean back and relax. That's, but, That's it. Now, close your eyes. But, honey... It... See how nice that is? See? It relieves the tension. Ah, oh, there's a boy. Look, you won't like... Uh... Melvin? Hmm? There's a lump on your neck. <laughs> Where is it? It's gone now. Where was it? Put your head back. Right there. <laughs> if you've been trying to put me in a good humor, Elizabeth, you failed miserably. If you've been trying to put me in a good humor, Elizabeth, you failed miserably. I guess the only thing left to do is tell your fortune. Well, naturally, that's the only thing to do. It would be silly to stay on the same subject, wouldn't it, Elizabeth? Telling your fortune and, and talking about your neck are exactly the same thing. You're not well, Elizabeth. I can prove it. That lump on your neck was your Adam's apple, right? What's that got to do with it? Well, Adam knew Eve, and Eve was weak, and there are 52 weeks in a year. So? So how many cards are there in a deck? Fifty-two. Oh, come on. Oh, please. No, seriously, darling. I went to the most wonderful fortune teller today, and she told me how to tell fortunes with cards. <clears throat> Maybe there's nothing to it, but it's lots of fun. I refuse to indulge in this hocus pocus. Well, suppose there is nothing to it, but... Madame Pestaboot had that, that mysterious look of a real Hungarian gypsy. Pestaboot? <laughs> That's Budapest, spelled backwards. Mm, look at that. That looks bad. <laughs> Make a good poker hand. <laughs> it looks like you're going on a trip. How did you know? Uh, I mean, how can you tell, dear? Look, this is the case card. Okay, and you can see for yourself, this is the same suit. So what's, what's that got to do with taking a trip? Suitcase. But look, any fortune teller tells you the same thing. You're gonna take a trip. You can be more original than that. Now, here's another suitcase. Huh. I guess I'm going with you. 
<laughs> and where are we supposed to be going, Elizabeth? Mm, let's see, I see teeth. You hear more teeth over here. Yeah, you dropped a molar down here. <laughs> now, the teeth are all connected by a, a bridge work here, see? Yeah. And um, the, the bridge is made of gold. <laughs> bridge, gold, gold. <clears throat> Golden Gate Bridge. Let me see that. What do you see that goes here? <laughs> Alvin, you're going to San Francisco. Yes, but this is amazing. <laughs> Did you say that you were going on this trip, too? If I play my cards right. <laughs> Get over it. How do you like that? You can see the Golden Gate, and all I can see is just a plain blur. Oh, well, that's the fog rolling in. <laughs> Elizabeth, don't joke. You may have great mental powers. See, do you think <clears throat> that you could figure out the name of the hotel where we'll be staying? I'll try. Okay, go ahead. Oh, let's see, this is an ace. That's an ace, yeah. Is there an ace hotel in San Francisco? Uh, uh, try another card. Mm, that makes it lace. Lace. Let me try another one. Let's see, that makes it a lace or a lace. Alice. Mm -hmm. Alvin, who's Alice? <laughs> try another card. Alice. That's it. That's it. What do you mean by that? I didn't have time to tell you. <laughs> Mr. Funny's sending me to San Francisco tomorrow, and I'm staying at the Palace Hotel. No. <laughs> I don't believe this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. What? Room 705. Elizabeth. <laughs> and the bellboy's name is Fred. <laughs> We're going to business. I'll quit Mr. Funny. Look, we will make Madame Boohead or whatever her name is look like so much good luck. No, no, wait. Maybe, maybe I was just lucky, though. Lucky? I tell you, you're a wizard. Alice, Alice. Oh, this is wonderful. A fortunate thing. Now, hang up. Don't worry. Look at <laughs> Hello? Hi, Mr. Funny. Yes, Alvin's it. Uh, no, as a matter of fact, he just left. Here, let me talk to you. I don't mind talking Honey, to you. Honey, I can take a message. Hello, hello, Mr. Funny. Elizabeth's wonderful. She predicted my whole trip to San Francisco. Yeah, she... Uh, <laughs> you told her what? <laughs> you even told her the room number? I made up Fred out of my own head. <laughs> I shall leave you at this point, Elizabeth. May I still go with you to San Francisco? Since you went to all of this trouble, yes, you may. Thank you, dear. I hope you'll understand, Elizabeth, if I don't speak to you for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Elizabeth, wouldn't it have been easier to just ask him if you could go? Hmm? <laughs> Stubborn as a mule, huh? <laughs> You a shame. Thank you. In just a moment, we'll bring you incident number two in Life with Elizabeth. Incident number two in the life of Elizabeth occurred the last time Alvin let Elizabeth use the car. As I recall it, Alvin was pretty worried on this particular evening. In fact, he had gone so far as to call one of Elizabeth's girlfriends. Why don't we listen in? Hello, Dorothy. Hey, does Elizabeth happen to be over there? Well, no, she took the car into town today, and I was just a little worried about her. Well, you know how she drives. After all, you never... Oh, here she is now. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I certainly will. And to you. Say hello to Harry for me, will you? Bye-bye. Don't get up, sweetheart. I'm going to go right over and sit down. <laughs> Why have I had a day? Well, I'm certainly glad you're home. I was worried about you. I just called Dorothy to see if you were over there. How was she? Huh? Well, she seemed bitter somehow. I don't blame her. No? Harry cracked up their car again today. He's had so many accidents lately, he's painted one side of their car green and the other black. Why would a sensible man do a thing like that? He says you ought to hear the witnesses contradict each other. <laughs> well, let's forget Harry. Did you get some of your shopping done today? Oh, no, there was no time for shopping. I just picked up a few things we needed. Yeah, I guess there is a difference. <laughs> Alvin. Hmm? I, 
you don't like me to use psychology on you, do you? Well, no. I mean, you, you hate people who beat around the bush, don't you? I've never given it much thought, honey. We've always believed in, in the direct approach, haven't we? Well, if this is the direct approach, I'd hate to be on a detour with you. <laughs> what I mean is, if, if a person has something to say, they, they ought to come right out and say it, shouldn't they? I'm waiting. <laughs> Some wives are the kind who, who don't tell their husbands anything. Elizabeth? All right, I'll come right out and tell you. Good. Guess where our car is. <laughs> no, we're on a quiz program. All right, where's the car? In the garage. Well, why all the build-up? You've managed to squeeze the car into the garage before this. There's... Hey, wait a minute. Whose garage? Elmer's. The mechanic. Look, I know Elmer. Elmer the bandit. I know the man's a thief. <laughs> you want to hear what happened? Yes, and I want to hear the whole story. Don't leave any of it out. Well, I, I finished my shopping and I was driving home and all of a sudden the car stopped. Well, didn't it make some kind of noise? Yeah, it went poof. <laughs> Cars don't go poof. Well, maybe it went doink then, but anyhow, it stopped. Well, couldn't you tell what was wrong with it? No, it did. One minute it was hitting on all seven. All and, seven. Uh, well, all nine then. And then it gave a kind of a, a rattling cough, and then it went... <laughs> and then it went doink and stopped. <laughs> Are you sure you weren't driving past the zoo? Oh, don't be superior, Alvin. I did the best I could. I don't pretend to know anything about cars. Well, we're going to take care of that little situation right now. Where's the pencil and the paper? Oh, look, sweetie, let's not go through that again, huh? As far as I'm concerned, the thing that makes the car go is the key. Can't we leave it at that? <laughs> I've put this thing off long enough. Come on, listen. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Honey, let's be practical about this thing. Sit down. Sit down. Now, if you knew something about cars, you could have saved us maybe $15 or $20 on a repair bill. Some other time, honey, please. Now, I am going to draw a diagram so that you'll know how a car works. Now. Want to bet? Now, this is the ignition switch. Now, what is the first thing you do when you get in a car? Adjust the mirror. Honey, please, you turn on the key. Now, you see what happens now? The ignition system is ready to supply the spark to the spark plugs. Now, of course, the horsepower varies with different cars, naturally. Oh, now I see. You see? What do you see? How they figure the horsepower on the various cars. Oh, good girl, how? They just lift up the hood and count the plugs. <laughs> Are you trying to kid me? No, go, go ahead. All right, now the cooling system is up there. And the water runs through the radiator, through the cylinder block, through here, and here. Of course, that helps keep the car cool. You make it so clear, darling. Well, thanks. Sweetie, you'll be glad we, we did all of this in the long run. I'm sure that you will. Now, tell me this. How do we keep the car cool? Strip the gears? <laughs> Elmer. No, no, please, please, honey. Come on, sorry. Now, go on. The, the water goes through the spark plug anyway. Honey, not through the spark plugs. Look, forget that. Just forget it. This is the important thing. The generator. Now, here's a case in point. Last week, I fixed our generator with nothing more than a plain bobby pin. <laughs> Whose? Yours. <laughs> well, then don't I get a commission? Honey, the point is that I fixed the generator with a bobby pin, whereas Elmer the bandit would have charged us ten or twenty dollars. Tell me more about the generator. Well, the generator doesn't work too well unless you have a good armature. Now, over here, we... I wasn't aware that I'd said anything funny, Elizabeth. No, no, go on, honey. No, let's hear your hilarious joke about the generator. <laughs> You said, you said the armature was right here, and I just wondered why they didn't use professionals. <laughs> you don't intend to have me teach you anything, do you, Elizabeth? Oh, honey, a woman doesn't have to know anything about a car. If anything goes wrong, she just opens the door and stands in the road and looks helpless. And looks stupid. <laughs> 
And then pretty soon a big, clever man who can fix generators with bobby pins comes along and everything's fine. Okay. From now on, you pay your own repair bills. All I know is that that car was running like a top when you took it to town. <laughs> what are you grinning about this time? <laughs> I was just thinking. The next time the car is running like a top, maybe we can go for a spin. <laughs> I should write, honestly. <laughs> Hello. Oh, oh yes, it, it's Elmer's garage. Ask him if he's carrying his gun. <laughs> How does it look? Elmer's garage. Oh, no. How much? $47.28. Forty. Well, if that's the best you can do. Okay, well, we'll pick it up in the morning. Okay, I'll, I'll tell him. Bye. I told you that that man was a thief. What was wrong with the car? <laughs> Elmer says to tell you some genius left a bobby pin in the generator. <laughs> We'll bring you incident number three in Life with Elizabeth. Incident number three in the life of Elizabeth occurred because of the bird bath. She'd always wanted one for the front of the house, so that's where we'll go, to the front of the house, to await the arrival of Alvin's friend Richard, who has just the kind of a brain to go with the bird bath. Uh, Clippity clop, some more from the top. Honey, please, you're frightening the birds. Get down on your knees and sweep up the leaves. Now you're frightening the neighbors. Clippity clop, some open the top. Oh, please, honey. What's the matter? <laughs> you're frightening me. I sing because I'm happy. And I can't stand your singing. Then close your ears. I have a better idea than that. What? Close your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you're a character, but I love you. Mm. Mm. Hey, maybe you're right. We better stop singing. Neighbors will think we flipped our lids. I sing because I'm happy. <laughs> honey, 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 not the muscle voice. Sound like you're singing in a trunk. Why don't you put this away? <laughs> oh, I forgot. <laughs> honey, please don't sing. Oh. Elizabeth, I ask you not to sing. Who's singing? <laughs> I just ran the lawn my foot. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sit down. Well, I count my toes. <laughs> What's the matter, nine? <laughs> nine toes. Oh, there's somebody in the house. Oh, what are you talking about? Well, listen, we have awfully big termites. There's somebody in the house. Oh. I don't hear anything. That's a switch. Usually the prowlers are wandering around outside with... <laughs> huh? There's a man in there and he's two feet tall. I don't see anybody. Well, I didn't either. I only saw his head. It was... I you were it's your stupid friend Richard who's in the house. How do you know? I just saw his lovable empty head sticking to the drapes. <laughs> He looked like the horseless headman. <laughs> He's not stupid. If Richard's in the house, he has a perfectly good reason to be in the house. We're out here, Richard! That's nice. <laughs> it's your friend who said that. Don't be sarcastic. <laughs> Richard, we're out here on the porch. Come on out. I can't find the front door. <laughs> I bet you're proud. <laughs> Mixed up. We've gone over the house since he was here the last time. Sure we have, honey. We changed the wallpaper. <laughs> Richard! Yes, Alvin? <laughs> Go straight back through the kitchen and through the patio and then turn left when you get to the alley. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. That's just the opposite. Come on with me. Honey, now don't. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for the directions. <laughs> this is Alvin. Oh, we've known each other for years. Hi, Alvin. Oh, Richard. Richard, what were you doing in the house? 
Well, Alvin, when I drove up out in front, you two were fighting. So I went around back. I didn't want you to be embarrassed. And then what? Well, and then when you stopped fighting, I decided to take a shortcut through the house. Well, that sounds logical. Except for one thing, we weren't fighting. Oh, sure you were. You were screaming at each other. You said, I can't stand your singing. And you said, close your mouth. And just like that, close your mouth. And that's not very polite, Elizabeth. Richard, we were singing. Singing? Out loud like that on the front lawn? And why not? Well, isn't that pretty stupid? Touche, Richard. Huh? I said, touche. I did before I left the house. I wish, you could have, I wish you could have seen my face when I saw a head sticking through the drapes. <laughs> uh, that was me. I know. I, uh. <laughs> well, uh, no, that, not that was me. It was I. Were you there too, Elvin? <laughs> Richard, 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 sit down, Richard. Now, let's, let's erase the blackboard and start all over again. All right. Uh, was there any special reason for your visit, Richard? <laughs> not that you're not always welcome. Oh, sure, there was a reason. Hey, you see, Elizabeth? What was it, Richard? <clears throat> I came to deliver the bird bath. <laughs> I think some good hot coffee will be good for all of us. Wait a minute. Now, you know how you've always wanted a bird bath on the front lawn. Yeah. All right. Richard's uncle had one he wasn't using, and he sent it over. I just forgot to tell you about it. Yeah, my uncle Jetson. He's real stupid. <laughs> I bet he's not half as stupid. That's not right. I certainly is nice of him. I'll go get it. Yeah, I'll help him. Why don't you set it up right here? Okay, honey. Hey, hey honey, close your eyes. We want to surprise you. I'll do better than that. I'll turn around as you get it set up. Okay, Richard. Bring her in. <laughs> All right, honey, you look around. Okay, Elizabeth. <laughs> Where is it? There. <laughs> I see the horse trough. Where's the bird bed? Right there. Right there. Alvin, I don't want to drown the birds. Well, Elizabeth, it'll look better when we get it up on a pedestal. Oh, yeah, it'll be about that high. Yeah, about that high. About that high. It'll look like the Queen Mary on a stick. <laughs> look at this. Send word to Australia. There's a bird bath on Elm Street that'll accommodate ostriches. See, I'll bet you could get about six owls in there at one time, Alvin. <laughs> Quiet, Richard. What size bird did you have in mind, Elizabeth? Don't tempt me. It would be good for penguins, too. Uh, Richard, I had little birds in mind. What? To, to a sparrow, this thing would look like Lake Minnetonka. Well, why don't you put about that much water in the bottom and then teach the sparrows to slide down there? <laughs> Fellas, a bird bath is about this big around. You mean like this? Yes, and it stands on a pedestal about this like high. Like this? Yeah, exactly. And then you put the round thing on top of the pedestal, and the bird... <laughs> it was a gig. The whole thing was a gig. Sure it was. April Fool, honey. Oh, honey. <laughs> Didn't I do a good job of acting stupid? <laughs> I think the whole thing was a touch of genius. Oh, well, they say genius borders on insanity, and I don't believe you two know how close to the edge you are. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, dear. <laughs> Erase what blackboard? <laughs> Richard, look, can't you watch it? You said you were going to erase the blackboard. Why don't you say goodbye to the people? Goodbye, everybody. Look, I've got a friend who's going to help you. In just a moment, Betty White will return to say goodbye. And now here to say goodbye to you is the lovely star of our show, Betty White. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you. <laughs> we give poor Richard such a bad time. As Richard puts it, stupidity is just a matter of relativity. The only trouble is he has such stupid relatives. <laughs> We'd love to see you again next week. Be back with us, will you? And once more, goodbye, everybody. Thank you.